Well, I guess we're ready to start building our jig. I know you're probably anxious to actually build the boat, but we can't build the boat until we build the jig. Once again, I want to remind you to work accurately and carefully. This, this is the foundation, and the jig ultimately determines the final shape of the boat, final shape of the planks. So work carefully, take your time, pay attention to your measurements, do it accurately. And once you have the jig built, it'll last for many boats. So let's get to it. The station molds represent cross sections of the hull. They are the foundation on which the boat is built. And accuracy in marking and cutting these out is crucial. The plans provide you with paper ones, but I'm using plywood ones here to facilitate the marking for this jig. Line the bottom edge up with the factory edge of the plywood. and mark the center line on the edge and on the top. Mark the location of the shear at both sides of the mold and the garboard location. Then trace around the pattern. Mark the center line on the plywood pattern. Mark the shear line. Mark the garboard rib end locations. And label center line, shear line. Next, you'll need to mark out a 3 quarter by 1 inch notch for the backbone. Once you've marked out all your station molds, you're ready to cut them out. It's important to remember to leave the line and to wear safety glasses when you're using a jigsaw. Once you've cut your notches out for your backbone, you're ready to do the final step on your station molds. Take some 2x4 stock and rip it in half to make your cleats. Cross cut your cleats to the width of your station molds. Then you're ready to fasten them with drywall screws and a drill. Flush up the bottom and your cleat We need to fasten cleats to the molds so that we can attach the molds to the strong back. With all seven of our station molds complete, we're now ready to assemble our strong back. Our strong back consists of two 1 by 6 by 12 number 2 pine boards. The first thing you'll need to do if the boards are hooked, which they usually are, is to snap a chalk line and rip a straight edge on them. Plane it smooth and then rip a parallel edge so we end up with perfectly straight boards. Fasten the boards temporarily together one atop the other with drywall screws. Find the center and make a mark. Center line all the way around. We're then ready to fasten the ends together. For this, I use copper rivets, or you can use bolts. About a half inch in from the end, bore two holes. Copper rivets look basically like nails with flat copper washers. To pin a rivet, Back it up with a heavy piece of iron, and with a ball-peen hammer, <laughs> tap. Put plenty of flare on the end of these rivets, because they're under a lot of tension when we spread the strong back apart. With the ends fastened, remove the drywall screws. In order to get our station molds to sit on our strong back, we need to widen it out. To do this, we insert a spreader piece in the center. We'll set this on the floor and spread it apart like a bow. We hope it doesn't break when we do this, because sometimes they do.
With our strong back spreader in place on our center lines, I've drilled a couple of pilot holes. Then it can be permanently fastened with some three inch drywall screws. The next step in the jig building process is to mount the station molds on the strong back. In order to determine their position fore and aft and side to side, we need to have a center line as a reference. For this, I'm going to use a string stretched from stem to stern. But before I stretch the string, I need to cut a notch in my spreader so that the string and spreader do not interfere with each other. To cut the notch out, I'm going to use my Japanese crosscut saw. You'll see me use these a lot. For small hand saws, I really like these Japanese saws. This is a back saw, fine tooth, extremely sharp, thin blades, and they cut on the pull. They're amazingly accurate. This one doesn't have a back on it. It has two different kinds of teeth. One set of teeth for cross cutting, one set of teeth for ripping. They're kind of new to the Western woodworker, but they're an ancient tool. And once you try these saws, you won't go back to Western push type saws. Loop the string around one time and sink it about a quarter of an inch. And do the same at the other end. Pull the string as tight as you can so it'll remain taut while you're building the jig. Next, we need to establish the center line in the fore and aft plane. And make a mark on the string with a ballpoint pen. From our center line mark, measuring towards the ends, We'll mark off our 17-inch spacing for our station molds. Now we're ready to use those marks on the string. Start with your center station mold and line the center line mark up over the mark on the string. The center veneer in the plywood should also line up over the string. It's important that all molds are square to the string. With your station mold square to the string, make some reference marks on your strong back before you clamp. Now we're ready to drill some pilot holes. Drill a pilot hole into the center of the strong back. Here I'm using a two and a half inch screw. It's important to remember that all our station molds forward of our center station mold fall aft of our 17 inch mark lines. And all our station molds aft of our center station mold fall forward of our 17-inch mark lines. We now have all seven of our station molds secured to the strong back. Because our canoe is double-ended and symmetrical, molds number one, two, and three are the same at either end of our jig. To facilitate a landing spot for our rib ends, we'll need to make a 1 16th inch bevel on station two and a 1 8th inch bevel on station one. On station two, Draw a line on the forward face, a sixteenth of an inch below the edge. And I also draw a line right on the bitter edge on the after face as a reference. 
so that I don't shave any material off from there. And take your spoke shave and bevel from your after line to your forward line. backbone serves two purposes. It allows you to plumb the station molds to the strong back, and it supports the keelson when you're building the boat. Check your molds for plumb against the strong back. Then secure it with a drywall screw. This mold's slightly out of plumb. Because of the slight rocker in this hull, you'll have to press the backbone into the notch at station one. Saw off the excess backbone.